Now we're at registration exemptions. There are SEC registration exemptions and there are state registration exemptions. Many managers are aware of the old 203B3 private advisor exemption. That exemption is no longer available as of July 21st of 2011. Instead, what we have now are the new registration ex exemptions, which includes the private advisor exemption, which we discussed, the foreign private advisor exemption, venture capital advisor, and family office advisor exemptions. Now, these last three exemptions are very specifically worded exemptions that cover specific behavior. So if a manager thinks that that their activities fall underneath one of these exemptions, they should really discuss that with legal counsel because these exemptions are so narrowly tailored to specific activities. On the state side, each state is going to have different registration exemptions based on their particular laws. In New York, a manager is going to be exempt if there's fewer than five clients. Again, please remember that there's that $25 million threshold for state jurisdiction, or excuse me, New York jurisdiction and SEC jurisdiction. So this exemption is only going to apply for those managers with less than $25 million in assets. California has a current exemption for advisors with less than 15 clients and more than $25 million. That exemption expires on April 19th, and instead, California has proposed a new exemption with no asset threshold and uh, a requirement that managers provide advice to either a 3C1 fund or a 3C7 fund and have no SMA clients. There's also a requirement that there be no non-accredited investors in either of those funds. However, there is a grandfathering provision if a manager ha manages a current fund. Again, this is a proposed exemption, has not gotten into effect yet, and it is subject to revision prior to it being ratified. Connecticut has an exemption for managers providing advice only to private funds. Again, no SMA clients. Illinois has an exemption for less than five clients. Florida has an exemption for managers with less than 15 clients over a 12-month period with no holding out to the public. It's very important to note that any of these state laws may change at any time, so a manager who is relying on an exemption from one of these states should really make sure that they are up, up to date with, any, with the most recent regulations with respect to these exemptions. For registration deadlines, uh, we'll start with SEC registration. That's going to be March 30th of 2012. State registration, state managers are going to need to register immediately unless they're exempted by state exemptions. Exempt reporting advisors have the same deadline as SEC registered advisors of March 30th. And for those managers who are currently registered with the SEC and need to move to state registration, they're going to have until June 28th to withdraw from SEC registration. Now, it's very important to note that in order to make that March 30th registration deadline, managers are going to need to file their ADV no later than February 14th of 2012. That deadline is coming up very soon. Form ADV and Form ADV Part 2 are the two main forms that are part of the investment advisor application. Form ADV is a publicly available form. Some information on that Form ADV has been redacted, but for the most part, all of the information that a manager includes on that form is going to be publicly available. So that's just something that some of these managers should keep in mind. Some of the major items on the form ADV include basic information on the manager, client types, compensation structures, advisory services, other business activities and industry relationships, 
disclosure items about potential conflicts of interest, direct and indirect owners. Now, this information, some of this information is not going to be publicly available. And also, managers should be aware if they have tiered ownership structures at the management company that ultimately you're going to have to go through each level of ownership to find the ultimate owner of the management company and, and that's what's meant by indirect owners. Finally there's certain disclosure items about past regulatory, civil, and uh, bankruptcy actions. There's also new information specifically for hedge funds or private funds. This includes a new private fund identification number, information about the fund, whether it's part of a master feeder, fund of funds, regulation, whether it's done its reg D filings, etc., etc. There's going to be information on the beneficial owners of the fund or the investors in the fund and information about the fund's service providers. That's on the form ADB side. There's also a new form ADB part two requirement. There's two parts to part two. One is a firm brochure and uh, the second part is an individual brochure. Now we say new because previously the form ADV part two was more of a check the box type form. Now under its new, under the new format, it is more of a plain English discussion about the manager's activities. On the firm brochure side, there's a discussion of the advisory business and the fees a discussion of the investment program and the risk factors involved in that investment program, a discussion about review of the client's accounts, and a discussion about brokerage issues, custody, and, and proxy voting policies. If managers are involved in RAP fee programs, there's going to need to be a specific appendix to part two. Uh, and then we've got the brochure supplement the brochure supplement is basically for investment advisor representatives and it's going to be providing background information on these IA representatives. This is provided to the client at the beginning of the relationship on an annual basis and upon any material changes to any of the information in the part two. Now we also discussed this ADV light registration requirement for exempt reporting advisors. Uh, basically, the exempt reporting advisors have to provide certain information and that information is uh, the, the, some of the more basic information that is required on the form ADV. It's just not going into quite as much detail as the regular form ADV for managers who are actually registered with the SEC. So now we have the registration timeline. In general, managers are going to start by gaining access to the IARD system to ultimately complete and then submit Form ADV. There are some costs involved with registering with either the state or the, the SEC. Uh, generally, it's going to, one of the major costs is the legal and the compliance program implementation. This is generally going to include helping the manager gain access to the IARD system, completing the form ADV, liaising with either the state or the SEC, and then, and then of course going forward with the back and forth with the regulator to ultimately get the application approved. That's on the registration side. On the compliance side, there's generally a back and forth between the lawyer or the compliance person with the manager to ultimately develop the appropriate compliance program for the manager. In addition to these, we, there are just expenses for both uh, the firm and the, and the individual representative of the firm at the SEC level. You've got the various fees, and those fees depend on the manager's assets under management. For managers with less than $25 million, it's $40. B 
between 25 and 100 million, it's going to be $150. And if a manager has more than 100 million, it's going to be $225. There's also a state notice filing. So based on where the manager is located, they will also have to do a notice filing in the state. And uh, we will be providing those as well. For exempt reporting advisors, there's a $150 fee and the various state fees and notice filing fees uh, are, are right here. There's also going to be fees for the investment advisor representative. For the SEC, there is no fee. For the various states, here are those fees. And then managers may also be subjected to exam fees for their IA representatives, and uh, those are there as well.